Rakshit, who do you think is going to win? Madrid or Man City? Man City. You're that confident? Yeah. Okay. You didn't see Benzema playing? I, I have. But Pep is going to do something, I think. So, you're believing on Pep and all the entire team? I believe. So, Pep has a great record against Madrid. I think he'll... And what do you it. think about the pedigree of Madrid playing so many big games in Champions League and match did not? That was supposed to be a question to you. <laughs> about about the X-Factor <laughs> Madrid have in the Champions League. So, yeah. Yeah, I think. I mean, generally, I would say Manchester because of the way they're playing. But the way Madrid has been playing lately, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to so, be easy. how does Pep stop Benzema? By not paying too much attention to Benzema. Benzema is so, one of... So, sorry to cut you off. What he does is Benzema drops again into midfield. Uh, he drags the centre-backs, creates more space for people like Vinicius mm. to run in. Mm. So, it, it's very difficult to mark. And so, and on the other hand, he just randomly pops up in the box, scores headers. He scored like three headers against Chelsea. Yes. So, how, so how does Pep address that? Off the ball movements are really good. Yeah. When he drops, he collects the ball and his interplay with the midfielders and the wingers is very good. So, you got to make sure that whoever defender is marking him should drop with him and the next three defenders close it. And also, the defenders keep talking to the defensive midfielder, whoever plays. If Rodrigo plays, talk to him. Sorry, Rodri plays, talk yeah. to him. Whoever is there in that place, talk to him so that he is never free. And more important is, even if he, if you let him free there, he's not the kind of player who's going to start dribbling def defenders. His interleague play is very, very good. But his off-the-ball movements late in the box is amazing right now. So, you got to make sure that everyone is talking to each other and making sure that he's always in front of your eye. Moment you lose him, you don't know where he is, and that's why he's so lethal. You see all the goals he scores against Chelsea. You know, yeah. going front, the defender yeah. goes coming yeah. back yeah. Yeah, yeah. and heading. So you got to make sure there's a lot of communication, but also not paying enough a lot of attention to Benzema. At the end of the day, you're playing Madrid. Yeah. It's not just Benzema, there are so many other players. Yeah. What you also need to do is uh, cut out the cutbacks. So you have Carvajal, you have Vinicius, they keep looping those balls in the, in the box. Benzema finds space and just heads them. Yeah. So, if you can stop the service, maybe that's one way to stop And the Benzema. way I think Pep does it really well is by going all out attack. Yeah. You see, you will hardly see, you will hardly remember Pep. Maybe at two years back when they played Barcelona, where it was a little bit wary of the other team. Otherwise, or maybe sometimes against Leopold, he does that. Yeah. Otherwise, you go full attack, yeah. you try to keep the ball, that's the way he wants to play. Yeah. And then you will only have Madrid playing in counters. That will be very, very, that will be ideal. So, I think that's one of those games where who is how much braver and what kind of strategy the, the coach wants to play. So, uh, Madrid and Man City both have had impressive knockout stages. So, uh, Madrid knocked out Chelsea and PSG. Uh, Man City knocked out Atletico Madrid in the, in the last round. So, which team do you think had a better uh, knockout journey? And does that in any, in any way influence your pick for the final? No, I think both of them had difficult games. Atletico Madrid are Champions so League. So difficult. Host. They are, I mean, they can be different in the league, but in Champions yeah, League, yeah. they are just a different animal. Giant so killers. Think, yes. So, surpassing them was not a mean feat. So, I think Manchester did really well. And even for Madrid, man, I think 3-1 away, I thought game is done yeah. dusted. The way Chelsea came and played, and to still overcome that, it was really, really nervy at one point of time. And still overcome that, Madrid also did really well. I think a slight advantage is Madrid already has a huge advantage in the local league. Yeah. In the domestic league. Yeah. Where in Man City is in a huge close battle with Liverpool. Yeah. That might play a little bit of difference. But again, very little. Because we know Man City, they can put one team yeah. to play in the Premier League and another team to play in the Champions League. That's how strong they are. But you saw them... So, they rest, Pep rested seven players against Liverpool yeah. in the FA Cup semi-final. And it sort of backfired. Yes. So, the bench strength for Man City isn't what it used to be. So, I, I still feel if you don't have players like De Bruyne in your team, that is going to weaken Man City significantly. I think so too. Because De Bruyne is somebody who's a goal threat. Yep. It's okay to have your ball position. But you have to have players. Like, I'll give an example. Even if Benzema is half fit and a little bit out of form, you got to play him. Right. Because he, get, he gets goals. And in this tight matches, it is very, very important because the chances are going to be very, very few. So, in that context, yes. But also with Man City, you never know whether the player has been benched, yeah. is out of form or yeah. is rested. <laughs> yeah. You never know with Man City. You know, you can yeah. think, ah, this team is going to play and suddenly you think, wow, Foden is a number nine. Yeah. Or suddenly Mahrez is playing. Or you know what, Grealish is back. 
or you know what? I mean, there are so many options that he has, and you also don't know whether the players are being rested or are, are benched. Yep. Another thing I wanted to ask you is about the away goals rule. So they have done away with the rule now. So as a result, we have seen a uh, low scoring first legs because the away team doesn't go all out to get the away goal. So how does no away goal rule impact this particular match going to you? I think not much. Because at the end of the day, when you get to the ground, you want not to concede and yep. to score. Before, what used to happen was you used to put more energy on getting the away goals. Even to the extent that even if you concede, it's all right, but get that away goal. Right. Because it put added advantage. But not much is going to change. At the end of the day, the aggregate, whoever scores more is going to win. So right. you don't want to concede. The first thing is you don't want to concede and you don't want to concede early. Right. Especially in big games, there are a lot of nerves. So I don't think much is going to change. Right. So Pep has a brilliant record against Real Madrid. He has played 19 times against Madrid, won 11 matches, drawn 4 and lost only 4. How many of them were with Barcelona? Many. Many of them. <laughs> many of them, yeah. But uh, what is it about Real Madrid? What is the X factor? What consumes Real Madrid in the Champions League that somehow they're able to defy the odds and just keep on progressing to the next round of the competition? 13 time winners, of course. Oh, one, of course, is the history, but second is the players. So, you know, when people like a Sergio Ramos and a Ronaldo leaves the club, you suddenly think, ah, they're not the same team. But look at the players. Look at the play. Look at the midfield. The kind of experience Casemiro, Cruz, and Modric provide. There isn't much. Of course, you can say they are not the quickest right now. But the kind of experience it needs to win big games in big tournaments, it's there. And it's second to none in the Champions League. You know, no one. I mean, Gundogan, Silva, and De Bruyne. Let's pick three. Yeah. I mean, these three are as good, if not better. You know, Casemiro, defensively very, very strong. Cruz can pick a pass. Modric is, is, is a world beater. So, they still have the same team. Of course, they miss the likes of Ronaldo and Sergio Ramos, who also were match winners. But they are a very, very strong team. And when you have Benzema in that kind of form, you always back yourself. Remember Asensio and, and yeah. Cisco and all of them on the bench. Yeah, Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale. It's, it's a massive, it's, it's a big team. There's no dearth of talent. It's just because the two big guns have, have left, we think, ah, you know what, yeah. they're not the same team. Yeah. So, there's sort of a consensus that uh, De Bruyne and Benzema are the most important players for their respective sides. Who would you say are the second most important players for Real Madrid and Man City heading into the semi-finals? I think for, for Madrid is the, the three midfielders. I if mean, you have to pick one. If I have to pick one, then, then Modric. Right. I think time and again, I think the other day only I was I was reading a stat very completely. You saw that pass from the outside of his foot? Yeah. Pff, that number of times. Yeah. That I'm, I'm a big fan of. But also I was seeing the, the number of uh, kilometers covered. I think it was 12 kilometers plus in consecutive so many games by Modric. Just unbelievable. Yeah. He's your age, right? Yes. Yeah. So imagine imagine playing in one of the best clubs. Of course, he's known for his passing and his and his and skill and, and the way he calms the game down and to work with the tempo of the game and doing that much of kilometers every game. He's just an unbelievable athlete. So I think for, for Madrid, it's just a midfield and the number of matches they have under their belt, number of big games they have under their belt, and just experience. And, 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 and for, for Pep's team, for, for Man City, I've always said it's just the way they play. Yeah. Just a complete domination which they acquire in their head is how they're going to play, is what they execute. So you can pick, that's why he is able to, most of the times, without any fail, able to pick any player and put him in any position, bench anyone. You know, you can, you can easily pick the front six, right. change them and put in another front six. It's just because of the conviction probably that he has in the way he wants to play. So I think, I hope they don't lose it. Right. I hope the importance of the game does not force him to change the way he wants to play or the way he wants to field. So, who would your second pick be after De Bruyne from Man City? Who you can see having the maximum impact in this match? I don't know why, but I want to say Foden. Yeah. Although, assistant goal-wise, he hasn't done much in the last few games, but he just... He's just such an exciting player and he's grown in stature. He's not the yeah. timid young boy who's always fast and quick. He's big also. He goes for challenges. And I don't know why he's due. So, yeah. I think... I'll, I know it's a it's a out-of-the-blue choice, but I think Foden. Right. 
Another interesting thing about Foden is that uh, Madrid have conceded a lot of goals from the right hand side. Even against Chelsea, they conceded all the chances came from Madrid's right. So, if Foden is deployed on the left, I, I really feel Which he can have an if, impact. Because we don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could be Sterling. But yeah. I, it's normally one of Foden or Grealish nowadays. Yeah. With uh, Sterling mostly in the centre or the right. And Cancel, of course, yes. uh, who's operating on the left yeah. as well. So, they could have a big impact. So, how do you see this first leg panning out? Do you think it'll be a high scoring match? Do you see either side keeping a clean sheet? Do you see goals? See, to say that one of the teams is going to keep a clean sheet is going to be very, very risky. The kind of firepower they have. But also, I also think it's going to be a little bit more nervy. Yeah. Because now what happens now, it's just universal. The moment you reach semi finals, you're a little bit more skeptical here. Yeah. And we're talking about two very, very, very strong teams. And both of them know a lot about each other. So I think unless we get a goal out of nowhere, a mistake or a penalty or a freaky goal, I don't, I don't see the game opening up. It will be a very, very tactical with both the coaches and the team knowing a lot about each other right. and a very nervy start. Right. So if I had to put you on the spot and ask you for your prediction for the first leg and who goes through to the final, who would it be? Man, it's very, very difficult. I'm <laughs> blank. I, I think... One, because of the form, and the second, what happened in previous year, I want Man City to go. Yeah. Do I think they have enough? I do think they, are, they have enough. But I don't think it's going to be easy. I think Madrid are very, very strong. They have a very strong team. Also, they have a lot of experience. But I think Man City are really, really flying right now. So I think with the kind of team they have, and with the kind of way they play, Man City, in my opinion, is going to edge out Man City. Oh, sorry, uh, Madrid, but not in a very easy way. It's going to take a lot of hard work, but I think they have it in them. Interesting. I also fancy Man City, at least in the first leg. It's just about what Madrid does in the second leg. Whatever, I'm not sure what is the deficit, uh, the advantage Man City need to have to take into the second leg that Madrid can't overturn in front of their fans. So, we are definitely in for two very, very, very exciting uh, legs of football. Thank you so much for previewing this match and I hope to uh, see uh, join you for other previews in the coming future as well. Yes, and thankfully both on the same team with Man City. Yeah. <laughs> the same fans. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. 